is Channel 2 News at noon. Good afternoon. The alleged mastermind of the World Trade Center bombing is headed back to New York at this hour. Federal sources say he escaped overseas, but now he is under arrest. We have team coverage for you, beginning with Channel 2's Reggie Harris, who has the latest from Stewart Air Force Base, where the flight is expected to land this afternoon. Reggie. Expect it, Lisa, but at this moment, there's no obviously unusual security activity here at Stewart Airport. Used to be a former air base a few years ago, but it is believed that the alleged ringleader for the World Trade Center bombing, 33-year-old Mahmoud Abu Halima, is en route, airborne, and headed here from Egypt. Abu Halima is an Egyptian native who authorities believe fled the United States on March 6, two days after Mohammed Salami, the first suspect to be arrested, was picked up. Investigators believe Abu Halima went first to Johannesburg, South Africa, then to Egypt, where he was arrested, we're told, in a crackdown on Islamic fundamentalists. We caution now, FBI officials have confirmed only that there has been another arrest, arrest but refuse to say who that person is or even if the arrest was made in Egypt. However, it's not unusual that accurate information is not officially confirmed immediately. We believe that Abu Halima is being returned on a U.S. military flight so they don't have to file a flight plan, don't have to notify for landing until they're very close. And that, that flight left sometime during the night, our time on the East Coast. We believe that when he does arrive in the uni United States, he will be sent back to Manhattan to the FBI headquarters downtown, 26 Federal Plaza, for processing first and then arraignment at uh, 40 Foley Square in the federal courthouse. And downtown in Manhattan is where my colleague Chris Borgen is standing by live. Well, Reggie, as you did say, the FBI will not confirm in so many words that uh, Abu Halima, in fact, is on that plane. But the fact is, they will confirm that a flight did leave from the Middle East and on board was a prisoner. And that prisoner is due in the United States sometime after 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now, whether or not that prisoner will land, that plane will land, at the Stewart Air Force Base, uh, that's problematical because with security being what it is and so much publicity about the Stewart Air Force Base possible landing, it is highly possible that the landing site might be changed, let's say, to McGuire or perhaps even to Teterboro for that matter. But nevertheless, once in the United States, Abu Halima will be brought for processing to the FBI building here at 26 Federal Plaza. And then after processing, he'll be brought across the street to the federal courthouse, at which time he'll be arraigned either tonight or sometime tomorrow. Investigators consider Mahmoud Abu Halima the mastermind behind the trade center bombing. Witnesses have identified the 33-year-old Egyptian-born Brooklyn cab driver as a constant visitor to the rented locker in Jersey City where the explosives were stored and where investigators say suspect Nidal Ayad, the 23-year-old chemical engineer, helped to assemble the bomb. Still, other witnesses have reported seeing Abu Halima the night before the bombing in the van which brought that bomb to the trade center. The driver of the van, suspect Mohammed Salama, alleged to have rented both the van and the storage locker. Now, Abu Halima, like suspects Salama and Ayad, are said to be associates of Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman, the radical spiritual leader of the Masjid al Salam Mosque in Jersey City. Now, while investigators consider Abu Halima, who allegedly used his home in Woodbridge, New Jersey, to hold meetings with the other suspects, the major figure, the ringleader of the group, they see Sheikh Omar as the suspect's mentor, the spark. Sheikh Omar, ruled to have entered the U.S. illegally, has been ordered deported from the United States. While acquitted in 1981 for the murder of then-Egyptian President Anwar Sadat, the Sheikh is under an Egyptian arrest order to face a retrial on charges he incited his revolutionary followers during a 1990 anti-government riot to injure civilians and to attempt the murder of a police officer. Now, with the arrest of Halima, there is also uh, rumors to the effect that the FBI are looking for, actively looking for, and about to secure the arrest of two other suspects. If that is true, that will bring then to five, the number of suspects directly linked to the bombing, and a sixth suspect, Ibrahim Egelbroni, who was arrested for slugging a federal officer during the search of his home. But there is reason to believe, as of this moment, that there is a grand jury session in which evidence will be presented, hopefully to end in the indictment of uh, Mr. Eagle Brony also putting him directly involved with the World Trade Center bombing. Well, that is in the future. As of this moment, we're all waiting for Abu Halima to come into the United States. Live from Foley Square, I'm Chris Borgen. Back to you in studio. All right, Chris, and we'll hear more from you at 5 o'clock. 
The crisis in the Kremlin apparently comes to a head later this week as the Russian parliament decides whether or not to impeach President Boris Yeltsin. This morning, the Supreme Soviet legislature voted to hold an emergency session on Friday to consider removing Yeltsin from power. A judge has ruled that Yeltsin's declaration of emergency rule is unconstitutional. Yeltsin made a move toward compromise today, meeting with Russia's parliament speaker and chief justice, but so far no agreement has been reached. Back in this country, a memorial service is planned in Florida tonight for two Major League Baseball stars killed in a fatal boating accident. Cleveland Indians pitcher Steve Olin and Tim Cruz died, and former Met player Bob Ojeda was seriously injured when their speedboat crashed into a dock in Florida. Television stations there are reporting that one of the players had a blood alcohol level of 0.17. That is well above the 0.10 limit considered legally drunk. Woody Allen faces a critical test tomorrow in his child custody fight with Mia Farrow. Ms. Farrow herself is expected to take the stand. The court case is in recess today while attorneys prepare. It was certainly a painful day for Allen on the stand yesterday. Farrow's attorney read a letter that 14-year-old Moses Farrow allegedly wrote to his father, expressing his feelings about Allen's affair with his sister, Suni Previn. It reads, quote, you have done a horrible, unforgivable, ugly, stupid thing that I hope you won't forgive yourself for doing. It goes on to say, if you take mom to court, I hope you get so humiliated you commit suicide. Allen is seeking custody of Moses and two other children, Dylan and Satchel. All are now living with Ms. Farrow. Tenants of a Brooklyn building say they live in fear every single day. Coming up next, accusations that the city ignored warnings about a building's safety. Plus, senior citizens protest a proposal they say they can't afford. We'll be right back. In art, matters of taste are often subjective. But in life, good taste is well defined. Fancy Feast Gourmet Cat Food in the bowl single serving can. Exceptionally moist, uniquely delicious. For a gourmet taste to satisfy even the most discriminating connoisseurs. Fancy feast. Good taste is easy to recognize. <laughs> New York Lotto. Hey, you never know. The Academy recognizes Channel 2 News. Arnold Diaz, Emmy Award winner for Shame on You. We care about the rip-offs in the average person's life. Are you a crook? No, I'm not. This guy we nailed in this report was the worst of the worst. Grand larceny, second degree, criminal impersonation, and second degree. Yeah, if I have like credit card fraud to you. I developed Shame on You because this is the kind of stuff I love to do. Fortunately, as a result of our report, he was arrested. Experience the excellence of Channel 2 News. Dear Nicole, having a fantastic vacation in Greece. Thanks to Homeric Tours. Homeric's all-inclusive package was an excellent choice. I'm seeing everything. The architecture, the people, beaches. I took a cruise. The Greek islands are captivating and the sunsets. Now I know why America's number one choice to Greece is Homeric Tours. Love me. Call Homeric at 1-800-223-5570 and discover Greece. Homeowners, if you're looking for the easy way to get a home equity credit line account at rates as low as this, listen to Bud Bash. We're shooting for a new goal, $100 million in new loans. That means we'll be making loans to a lot of people, people with good credit, people who've had credit problems, even people who've had trouble getting a loan in the past. Call Personal Mortgage Corporation. When it comes to second mortgages, we approve, and with $100 million to lend, the faster the better. It's the best thing I ever tasted. Really, better than anything. Go ahead, name one thing better than those cookies. See, you can't. A cookie like this could only be intimates.
Well, as the saying goes, it could be deja vu all over again. Media tycoon Rupert Murdoch has his eyes on a familiar venture, the troubled New York Post. Murdoch, who sold the Post five years ago, has talked to Governor Cuomo about whether he has enough political support to buy back the tabloid. Under the law, you're not allowed to own a newspaper and a television station in the same market. Murdoch already owns WNYW TV. At least two senators, though, reportedly would support a change in the law. Residents of a Brooklyn building think there ought to be a law protecting them in their own homes. They live in a city-owned building that's falling apart, literally. As Channel 2's Marsha Kramer first reported, it was not a matter of if, but when the walls would give way. These broken beams and chunks of concrete tell the story, an accident that was waiting to happen, and it did. Three months ago, we told you that this building at 4108 15th Avenue in the Borough Park section of Brooklyn was a ticking time bomb. A city-owned apartment house for the poor so filled with structural defects that according to a structural engineer hired by Channel 2 News, it was just a matter of time before a collapse took place. At the time, city housing officials questioned the credibility of our engineer. But Monday night, that time bomb exploded. A portion of the first floor collapsed right into the basement, weakening the structural soundness of the front half of the building, tearing out a chunk of the plumbing system, and causing the tile floor in the main hall to buckle dangerously. Luckily, no one was injured. But when we went back there yesterday with our engineer, he was appalled. It's inexcusable that it was allowed to ever get to this particular state of distress, deflection, bowing, bulging, everything that could go wrong would have been is here. But we weren't the only ones who alerted the agency about this dangerous state of affairs three months ago. Tenants griped and so did the new super, Gary Chance. This is what HPD told him. So they've been aware of it. The agency may have been aware of the problems, but they sure didn't do anything to fix them. Yesterday, an HPD repairman was on the scene. It has not really collapsed. See, that's only floor joists. That's, that's floor joists. That's not beams. These are girders. If this gave, it will collapse. As long as these are here, it will not collapse. Do you agree with that? Of course not. A floor joist is a floor beam. But for tenants like Sonia Torres, who lives in the building with her family, including three kids, the promise is small comfort. Well, I didn't sleep last night. I doubt I'll sleep again tonight because it's very scary. It is inexplicable that they haven't addressed these issues. Well, half a dozen men who worked in the city's housing repair program told us back in December that they were routinely ordered to cover up or ignore structural problems at work sites all over the city. HPD Assistant Commissioner Dick Heitler's explanation for why the repairs take so long is, quote, it's a slow process to scope out a building and get the work done. So we're talking about what could be hundreds of buildings in the city. There's really no way to know, but I think it could be hundreds of buildings, and it's a really big problem. All right, Marcia, and more at 6 o'clock tonight. More at 6. Thank you. Dozens of senior citizens outraged at proposed cuts in senior programs vented their anger this morning at New York City Hall. No cuts! No cuts! No cuts! Are you going to allow that this happens? No. No. They're protesting Mayor Dinkins' proposal to cut $9 million from the city's Department for the Aging. They're worried the cuts will kill needed programs at senior citizen centers throughout New York City. I'm approaching the, the famous 80 year. When I get to that age, I start to lose the ability of cooking and shopping and, and living like a normal being. I need the hot meal at the senior center. The senior citizens are calling today Aging Advocacy Day. Well, this is also National Nutrition Awareness Month, and Frank Field will be up next with ways you can improve your health. Not everyone, though, is counting their calories. We'll tell you about an ice cream bar that has a ton of them, literally. Dear Midas, after getting an outrageous estimate at my dealer, I came back to your shop. Your mechanics, John, Jim, Ron, Robert, gave me a free estimate, stayed late to finish the job, and even pointed out that my brake pads were under warranty, saving me a lot. I was so thankful for not being taken advantage of, I bought them all lunch the next day. Thank you, Sarah Ako. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer for The Money Store with a message for homeowners during the tax season. Until April 15th, the Money Store has a special rebate offer. On all new home equity loans, the Money Store will give you a check equal to one month's payment, regardless of the size of your loan. So call now for the home equity loan, which comes with a one month rebate. But remember, your application must be received by April 15th to qualify. 
only at the money store at 1-800-LOAN-YES. That's 1-800-LOAN-YES. Able to bring to large numbers of people little donuts. The plan, the plan. Able to fill tiny eclairs with thrilling fillings. The plan, the plan. Able to bring minis to the many. It's the mighty mini man. Who, disguised as the Dunkin' Donuts baker, is making more varieties of Dunkin' Minis? The chocolate, the jelly, than humanly possible. The coconut. Dunkin' Donuts, home of the mighty mini man, where you'll find truth, justice, peanut butter, cinnamon, glazed. Channel 2 News Health Watch, sponsored by Sanka. It's a little thing. When I have my morning coffee, I like to spread my newspaper out. And for 32 years on the 710 Express, this was impossible. You have to fold it 19 times so you don't cross that invisible line into the other guy's seat. It's nice to have the time to appreciate the smooth, rich taste of Sanka coffee. And my coffee tastes even better without the paper cup. Sanka, everything you love about coffee. In our noon health watch for this Wednesday, free advice on the everyday things you can do to take better care of your body. Frank Field is here now with details on valuable services and lectures from your family, something we can all benefit from. Indeed. Uh, this is National Nutrition Awareness Month, and Lisa mentioned that before. Many of our local hospitals are holding wonderful health fairs and nutrition expos. Now, here in the city, for example, a free all-day nutrition exposition features food, fitness, and fun, and it's going to be held tomorrow in Flushing. It's at the Flushing Hospital Medical Center at 45th Avenue and Burling Street, and the hours will be from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's tomorrow, and programs include culinary bingo, right bite for young folks, cooking demonstrations, educational videos, literature, and lots more, and it's all free. And if you want more information, you can call that number on the screen, 718-670-5403. Now, the national slogan for this year's campaign happens to be Eat Right American. If you live in the Bushwick section of Brooklyn, the Family Health Center of Bushwick will have dietitians on hand. Lots of goodies tomorrow. The Family Health Center is on 1238 Broadway, and tomorrow's open house will run from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Everyone is invited. Of course, it's free, and you can get free health packages full of nutritional food items, and you can enjoy lectures and videos and lots of other goodies. And many of the hospitals and health centers in our own tri-state area will be offering similar programs at different times this month, so I would suggest you check with the medical or community center closest to your home. Uh, they probably have some kind of a similar program underway. Eat Right America. You I got like it. that one. All right. Well, tying a shoelace, reading a book, or even playing a game are just some examples of what can cause frustration for a child. As a parent, you should know what to do when that happens. Joining us now with important advice is Anne Plachette Murphy of Parents Magazine. Well, first of all, you should know that frustration is a good thing. Um, it's it it's is? really well, sure. I mean, if you never are frustrated, you're mm -hmm. never really reaching, and that in fact, if you think of it as a developmental skill, mm -hmm. it helps a lot in terms of helping your child. Because my first piece of advice is do not be a helicopter parent. A lot of us hover and then we leap in mm -hmm. as soon as a child is frustrated, and this isn't necessarily a good thing. Obviously, if your child is really having a hard time, yes, you can help. And in fact, on days if your child tends to have tantrums on days when he doesn't, make sure he gets the message that you understand that that's a big, big step in the right direction. So reward him if that works. Some people give stickers or whatever your child would enjoy. Reward those tantrum-free days. The other thing is to give a child some choice and control. If you think about it, most little children have very little control over what happens to them when they eat, when they have to take a bath, when they have to go to bed. So if, in fact, you can give your child a choice about what he's going to wear or what he wants to eat, you might, in fact, help him deal with some frustrations that are built into his life. And the other thing is to defrustrate his environment. If he has trouble reaching the sink, get him a footstool. Um, if there are rules in the house, make sure you stick to them so that you don't set yourself up for battles. And I think another thing is to you know, remove temptations. Finally, model correct behavior. If when you are frustrated, you swear and throw things <laughs> and make a big scene, it isn't very you know, likely that your child is going to learn to control frustration in a very constructive way. So do try to look at how you handle frustration and teach your child that way, too. That's right. You're a mirror for your child. Absolutely. So. And of course, you can find out more about this in the April right. issue of <laughs> 
Parents Magazine. Yeah, thanks, thanks Annie. Appreciate it. Well, here's one way to deal with a frustrated child, a dream dessert. How about this? A six and a half ton ice cream bar, complete with popsicle stick. The big idea comes from a very little village in Greenland. Residents had to use tree saws to carve it up and ice picks and hammers to break it into bite-sized pieces. Now, we don't know its flavor, but we can tell you for sure it is definitely not dietetic. Well, what isn't so pleasing today is the weather. Frank will be back with a very wet forecast. Plus, a story of survival at sea. What happened when this man came face to face with a hungry shark? Uh, and then it. Really time to. Quality time for us is reading wonderful stories together. For the experience of a lifetime, make time to read with your children. Oh, I looked in the phone book, and there were pages of dentist advertising, but uh, I couldn't tell one dentist from another. My friends would say, try my dentist, he's great, but they couldn't give me any specific information about him. As a mother, reliable information is very important to me. In three minutes, the operator from 1-800-DENTIST told me all kinds of information on the dentist. They answered all my questions about the dentist. Uh, I knew the dentist was pre-screened, and all of this was free to me, so why wouldn't you call 1-800-DENTIST? I'm Roseanne Coletti with a reminder the Troubleshooter Hotline is open right now until 1 o'clock. So if you've got trouble, call our volunteers at 212-582-0220. And don't miss my Troubleshooter Reports weekdays at 5 on Channel 2 News. Now appearing at one of New York's premier museums, a fascinating exhibition containing over 2,000 examples of the world's most interesting stuff. <clears throat> excuse moi on loan from dozens of discerning individuals who have collected a dizzying array of stuff like marbles, miniature cars, dirt, baseball cards, barbies, and of course, <laughs> stuff like me. Great stuff. Now appearing at the Children's Museum of Manhattan. I'd see it myself, but um, plastic. <laughs> Do you know how quick and easy it is to make a bubble? Vittorio, tell them about the sauce. <laughs> my mother. And now it's easier than ever with new Boboli pizza sauce. Tell them it's as easy as making a sandwich. Oh, ma'am, who'd want a sandwich when they could have a Boboli? Boboli with cheese, Boboli with chicken, Boboli with spaghetti. They're all so easy to make with new Boboli pizza sauce. Look for it on the Boboli rack like this. And remember, it's more than a pizza. It's a Boboli. The Jane Whitney Show's moving to the Big Apple. Because New York audiences are the best. Be part of the excitement. Call 1-800-771-2700 for free tickets. Time to update now our top story this Wednesday noon. Federal authorities say Mahmoud Abu Halima, the alleged mastermind behind the World Trade Center bombing, has been arrested in Egypt and is now on his way back to New York in the company of federal agents. The former Brooklyn cab driver is expected to arrive at Stewart Air Force Base in Newburgh later today. Abu Halima will likely appear in court for a hearing sometimes late this afternoon or tomorrow. A Florida man is telling an amazing story of survival this noon after a close encounter with a shark. Ken Danowitz is hospitalized with several cuts and shark bites. He says he was swimming in the ocean off West Palm Beach close to shore when the shark attacked. I was on my back and it just came up and immediately uh, bit down on the front of my feet. Uh, and then it bit again and it started to thrash and it, then it's when it started to roll me. And that was it. It happened very, very fast. Well, doctors say the tendons in Danowitz's feet were cut and he'll need more surgery to repair damage to his bones and his skin. That is one lucky guy. Yep, he is. We're not so lucky. Well, in a way, if you look at the bright side, the, the rain that's falling out there has yes. been washing away that stuff Snow, on the ground. And flowers, spring flowers. Uh, spring flowers, yeah, they're right around the corner. A little on the cool side, though, it's 38 degrees. We do expect temperatures to inch up slowly. Uh, not much, though. It's uh, cloudy and the humidity is 100 percent. And uh, the rain that's been falling in some areas has been quite heavy. And that means local flooding uh, will occur during the day. And we have flood watches and flood warnings for many parts of the area north and west of the city uh, where there are streams. And still to come is this little low that you see here that we pointed out here yesterday. Well, it's pretty much close to where we left it yesterday. It's just drifting. It's not really moving. And it'll be circling round and round for the next couple of days. And you know what that means, right? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, we have that mild air uh, moving up out off the ocean and the moisture. And uh, with that, we have the kind of drizzly and dreary weather that you expect with that. Radar itself shows the heaviest rainfall has now moved off to the east. So 
there's a break out there, not in the way of clouds. It'll stay cloudy all day, and we'll have light rain during the day, too. Uh, so you'll have to take the umbrella with you. Uh, the flood watch continues in most areas, and warnings in some areas. And then this light rain and fog and drizzle will persist right through tonight. Visibility's will low. If you're traveling, uh, over the, over the morning, next 24 hours. You're going to have some problems with the airports because of visibility and fog, especially during the morning. But uh, note that temperatures will gradually inch their way back to normal. The normal high should be in the uh, low 50s, so maybe we'll get there. But it's going to be kind of wet. Keep those umbrellas. All right, thanks, Frank. Coming up on Geraldo this afternoon, ways to spice up your sex life. The helpful hints come from guests ranging from lingerie manufacturers to Jessica Hahn, who says she is both sexy and devout. You cannot tell the Jessica Hahn story without talking about my faith, which is still strong and it exists. Don't you think it's somewhat at least maybe ironic is the word that, uh, that a woman who was thrust into notoriety by a rape at the hands of a cleric would do a sex fantasy video? We all have lust. We all have love. We all have frustration and hurt and pain. Is lingerie a kind of antidote to the blues? It's a state of mind, and I think every woman, first and foremost, has to feel sexy. Ooh. Just as we, just as we saw before, in the rain, little Valentine baby doll. Well, you can see more of Geraldo here on Channel 2 News at 4 o'clock today. That's Channel 2 News at noon for this Wednesday. I'm Lisa Rudolph. Dana Tyler will be along for later newscasts. Until then, have a great day. People always talk about it. They love gossiping about other people. I'm a perfect one to gossip about. Paul McCartney's wife speaks out. People think I am this weird person. The stuff I read about myself, I am really not a bitter person. Hey, don't blame me. Then. In my opinion, he's a cold-blooded killer. When she had to choose between her two boyfriends, the decision she made killed her. Mary's fatal choice on the next hard copy. Tonight at 7 on Channel 2. It's Macy's Spectacular One Day Sale, Wednesday with...